Hello everyone, and uh, today uh, we are in the second episode with Professor uh, Fikri Abu Zidan, and today we will talk about practicing ethically in research. Prof, welcome again, and so uh, shall we talk about the ethics in research? What would you like to, you know, uh, say to trainees, ethics in research? Yeah, Arif, I think uh, we have really to stress this from different angles. And I just like to say that ethics is the same wherever you work. So ethics as a merchant is the same as ethics as a doctor, is the same as ethics as a researcher. People cannot really have the analogy. For example, we know that the four, four pillars of research, clinical research, are don't do harm first, then do good, then you have really to uh, be uh, respect the autonomy of the person or patient, and uh, finally, uh, don't, uh, you have to be fair with everyone. So fairness. So of course, you don't do harm, you good, you do good, you respect people. And you be unfair with them. These are principles even with your children. You have to be uh, respect them, give them autonomy, be fair with them, don't harm them, do good for them. This is why we take them to school. We really... It's the same principle, by the way. People don't look into that from the overall ethical aspects. But of course, it would be tailored towards research. So, And then it can be even tailored toward performing research and publishing research. And one of the big things... The, sh the, the benefit should be more than the harm. This is as a principle. Okay. Now, if you go to the same principles of being a good researcher, I will stress that if you want to be a successful re researcher after 40 years, you have to be honest. This is the main pillar for you to be a good researcher on the long run. If you are not honest, you can have quick gains, but your outcome will be really surprising. How much really you will lose out quickly and maybe you even you lose you all your research, uh, res uh, uh, I mean research. Yeah, yeah. And th there is a lot of examples, I don't want to specifically mention that. Uh, actually I run, uh, uh, I used to run the three months, uh, four months uh, research ethics committee for the PhD students, but they lie in the same thing. And the difficult question you can ask yourself, can I teach people ethics? I think ethics starts from home. But you can show people at least to respect their limits. And so this is also to stress between what is ethical and what's legal. So even if a person does not be behave ethically, he should be stopped legally from doing harm. Yes. I'll give an example. We know that the criteria of authorship, to be an author on a paper, has developed over time. And the, 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 the minimum three that every student should realize, if you want to be an author in a paper, there are three criteria which is agreed by the international journals. You should participate in the idea or analysis. If people get data for the statistician to do analysis, that's also accepted. You should draft the first paper, and you should actually uh, uh, approve the final version. Which is re which is you know, which is acceptable. Yeah. Now, science, I think, a few years ago, put a fourth pillar. What's that fourth pillar? Accountability. That means if one of your researchers made fabrication or falsification, and you accept it to be on that paper, you are as accountable as him because this is a crime for the community. This is a crime for the scientific community. Because you are carrying false information to the community and you are changing the, 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 the uh, management, medical management, which hurts patients. So it's very important to fulfill these criteria. And of course, you have to be trained. It's not ethical to do research without a training. You know, if you have, uh, why do we do research, by the way? There are two important factors why we do research. To push science, which is the, really the main objective, but also there are other, other factors. Like, for example, promotion depends on a specific number of publications, which varies in different countries. You, if you get publication, the, string, the strongest factor for uh, research is fame and fun. 
You all, oh, the, the most maximum beautiful feeling you feel if you see your name published and cited and, and people appreciate what you do. The, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I, you mean that you know that there are different actually maybe aims to yeah. do the research. Yes. But whatever they do or whatever, you know, the reason actually the, the, the people doing they research. They should be honest. Yeah, the, the honesty is the, you know, the, the, the yeah, main of course. thing, of course. Yeah, of course we work, we should work for promotion, hard work, recognition, grants. That's or maybe a, just change the, you know, science, as you said, yeah. uh, for the good for the people. Yeah, definitely. So, and of course you practice uh, ethically and then outcome is ethical. And I, I, yeah, and yeah. If, if the quickest way, you can have quick way to publish, putting yeah. your name on other people's papers, we call it honorary yeah. authorship, yeah. which is not acceptable. Now, I, can, I like to stress this simple thing. It's unfair. I mean, you should work. You should work. Uh, you should take what you work for. So that's called fairness. That is called fairness. So don't do harm. Do good in your research for the community. Autonomy. Autonomy is a very, very important issue. And now with the, I can say, uh, research now, like if you will go to commercialization or companies, like for example the COVID-19 vaccination, it's an amazing achievement in a very short time. And it would not, it would have never been uh, successful without really a system of developing it, with getting different people to, to produce it. Now, even within that, you should have an autonomy factor for promoting each researcher within your team. Even, let's say I have an overall uh, aim as a leader in trauma that all of us will agree on this aim. I think a leader should think about the individual development and needs for each person. The, 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 the autonomy means that you should respect the individual interest of, the, of your team. You cannot use people for your own interest. You have to respect the agreement between you and everyone. So again, we go to, to ethics is a very important issue. It depends on honesty. And again, I want to stress a last point here is that it is non-ethical again to do research if you are not properly trained. And I have that issue when I was asked by to be the, like the head of the research, human research ethics committee in the university. One of the responsibilities was to improve the design of studies. We used to go through very scrutinized review process of three reviewers, trying to improve the research design. Because doing bad research is not ethical. Why would you research if you, do it, you don't do it properly? So my advice to the young researchers, two things, students, etc. Try to stick to someone whom you think that he's ethical. And I remember the students in a culture where the people support them, they really try to put their names on papers, and I have to sit with them and uh, with their own supervisor. And I told him, look, we teach you honest research. We don't cheat you. We want you really to learn that if you want to take ownership of your ideas, you have to work hard. We give you the chance, but you work hard. And actually, we have recently a great paper published by one of our students about COVID-19 in PLOS One. And the students do the job. And your duty is to guide them because if you practice with them ethically, they will really they be ethical. Yeah. And, uh, and by the way, role modeling is very important. We can really affect the students not by talking. If they see us honest, if they ask fair, if they see us really meticulous, they will try to mimic us. Yeah. And I, I remember, for example, I'm a statistician. I don't believe in replacing data, although it is acceptable. They call it imputation, which means you have a missing data. You try to get the average, etc. And I don't practice that. I, I, I'm from a school that doesn't practice that. Of course, it's not, it's not, uh, science is not black or gray. If there's a missing data, I will analyze the data without it, okay? Now, I remember there was a paper with Dr. Ayman Tadros, prospective study, pelvic fractures, which took us one year to collect. And of course, we, th we thought critically about the variables and we did our best and we did the analysis, advanced analysis. And one of the reviewers, he asked us for a specific variable which we did not pick. Yeah. So the only solution to do that is to go, now this is a prospective study, to go retrospectively into the files to fulfill the requirements of the, of the reviewer. 
And just, I'm not going to statistics, but just to tell you this, in an advanced multivariate analysis, let's say you have 10 variables. If you have a missing point of all 10 variables in one patient, the complete patient is dropped out. Yeah. So the variable they asked us to, to do is actually, they needed to see how many packed red blood cells have they taken in this pelvic fracture treatment. And then uh, Ayman came to me and he told me, Prof, what shall we do? Shall we go to another journal? He said, no, you try your best and we will try to answer them. He went into the whole 100 files. And of course, if you have dead patients, usually those dead patients, the files will be lost. Yeah. And if you are comparing those dead without those that are not dead. Yeah. And then it will matter. If you miss one file, your results will be all spoiled. Yeah. And believe me, I remember, out of 10, we got only seven. Wow, okay. And three were missing. And I could easily do the average. Yeah. I didn't do that because I have to believe in what I do. And I told Ayman, look, we hope it works. We yeah. hope it works. I'm not sure what is the outcome. And believe me, it just kept the p-value 0.04. Mm. You feel happy that you followed what you breach. Yeah. I cannot breach because of the aim, I just take the average. People would do that, but I don't personally do that. So why would I change my practice, which I believe in, simply to get a paper, another paper? Yes, sticking with the, you know, the principles always is a must I, uh, in, in, the, in any practice, I believe. Yeah, yeah of course, also of the honesty, Arif, is to recognize your limitations. Pro, uh, I, I just want to ask you the, the, the question about, so you've been in many journals as a reviewer, as an editor, as a, you know, a consultant for their statistical, you know, uh, or methodologies, everything. And also you, you've been in a, you know, the chair of the ethical, you know, for review board, uh, in the, the, the many institutions. Uh, I just want to ask you, what are the common mistakes unintentionally, uh, let's say, mistakes you, you know, observed in the applications, the, ethically, I mean, you know, what are the, you know, most, the, the issues that you faced and uh, you respond, of course, the feedback, to, you know, the, the, the others or the, 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 the investigators uh, to, to, to fix this ethical, uh, the problems. Do you have any, you know, uh, yeah. the things in your head? Yeah, I, I, if, I mean, you have to appreciate that the ethical committee is a legal process. Yeah. Uh, it's different from teaching students. It's, these are two different issues. Yeah. Because the ethical committee, once you are put, and this is what the students have to understand, if you are the head of the ethics committee, it's a legal process like a judge. Yeah. Because you have to protect patients, not to do harm. Yeah. And you are legally responsible if something goes wrong. Yeah. So in our university, believe me, I was so impressed that I couldn't pick a lot of non-ethical, but of course there is lack of uh, methodology, methodology or, issues yeah. which would be fixed before this time. Yeah. And uh, it's your role as a head of ethics committee to be sure that the patients are not hurt. Uh, reviewing for journals is different because I get papers from different countries. And I can tell you some cheat clearly. As an expert, you pick that. I remember one paper from a specific country. They came with me with a study of admitted patients, 50,000 trauma patients in two years. And that's not believable because the largest trauma centers, they have 3,000 maximum. And you look to the data, I mean, you can't accept, it's your role as a reviewer is to pick those and to tell people, and I remember many times I told the editor, this is a fraudulent paper, and they take a lot of investigation because you have to be careful that if you doubt that the paper is fraudulent as the reviewer, the editor has the right to reject the paper without anything. But you can't tell that, don't blame people, oh, you are, un, uh, you are non-ethical. No, you practice ethics, you do your best to control your research to be ethical, and don't inter I personally don't interfere in other people what they do. But as a reviewer, I clearly tell the editor, please, there is a lot of problems here. My advice to you is not to publish. That's the easiest way. Yeah. And I had personally an experience with two people within during this long period who really were very fraudulent in their work. So it's the responsibility of the senior person, chair of departments, to try and get the standard of ethics as high as Top. Ethically possible. Yeah, and they say usually, if you see a young guy without training in your department publishing 
without uh, too much in a very short time, you have to question what's going on as a chair. It's your duty actually to look into what you, the people in your department. For example, in the trauma group I work with, you, you, you've been with me. I, as a senior scientist, I do not put my name in any paper without controlling the data and seeing what, it, what, is, what is in it. Yeah. Because you have to trust the people. So you train people on the principles, you show them how to do it, so you trust them. And the ethical issues has to be tested slowly before you get confidence in someone and then you don't ask him. Khalas, he's well trained, you know that he's ethical, he knows what you want. And this is why investing in training people is more more fruitful than really working with everyone. You get you get in problem at the end. Okay. As a summary, uh, you know, take home messages from this, you know, uh, uh, interview or this chat. So, what are the you know three four things clearly you can say to junior trainees or students uh, who are interested in research yeah. about ethics? What are the three to four messages you want to give? Yeah. If you want to gain on the long run, practice research ethically. You can't be surprised how much I fought sometimes for young people, even if I do their work and encourage them. So you gain people with you. I mean, one of the most hard lessons I learned myself, and I don't want to repeat it, one of my seniors in one country, without specific thing, he took my six months research which is very unique, and he put his name on it. And I was in a difficult situation, shall I pull out or not? But then I didn't, I was, you know, don't, don't use the weakness of people. Yeah. Try to be generous. If you want to be a leader, there are three things you have really to realize. You can go and attend a leadership course. Yeah. Try to be generous, try to be fair, try to be honest with people, and try to give good communication. What do you mean by good communication? And you've seen this with me, Arif, whenever we do a paper. Together, try as a team, reach the target, which is answering a research question. Yeah. So that is my home message. Please, ethics is the same. Ethics in the house, ethics in work, ethics in medicine, ethics in research. It's the same thing. It's our duty to protect the community and, to, and, and really to try our best to, to do the best and to be really, really doing our best to answer such question honestly. Making mistakes is no problem. We all make mistakes. You, you try your best and you answer it different. I'll give you an example and I'll close with this. Captain Cook, once he came to Australia, he saw a kangaroo jumping. And he looked to this animal, a strange animal, he never seen it. And there was an Aboriginal translator beside him. And he told him in English, what is this? What do you call this? He told him kangaroo. Now, kangaroo is not the name of the animal. It means in the Aboriginal language, what does he say? And then it's a common mistake. Everyone's saying kangaroo. This is an unintentional mistake. So we make mistakes as a human. We don't say that we don't make mistakes, but we shouldn't do it intentionally. And we should strive to be the best people who practice research in, in this. So people are happy. We are happy. We are proud. You stand up on the stadium and you speak. You know that you have peace in mind. You sleep in mind. Not Don't follow the ego. Try to help the community. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much, Arif. Thank, Thank you. you.